Now due to the asymmetry of thrust, because of the thrust from the left engine, there will be yawing moment on the aircraft like this. Correct? Now we know that this yawing moment and rolling moment, both are coupled. So because of this yawing moment, there will be rolling moment also. Right? Now to counter this yawing moment, pilot needs to apply rudder deflection like this. There will be side force on the vertical tail, which will create anti-clockwise moment like this to counter the yawing moment produced by the engine. Its velocity will decrease till the point when there will be again equilibrium between the thrust produced by this left engine and the drag. Right? Engine failures are critical phenomena. But sometimes pilots need to shut down a particular engine intentionally too in order to save the engine from catastrophic damage in case of foreign object damage case. Right? And according to the civil aviation requirement, all the jet powered aircraft flying for a longer distance and especially over the ocean are required to have ETOPS approval, which stands for Extended Range Twin Engine Operation Services. Right? In this, they have to demonstrate uh, to the civil aviation authority that aircraft can fly up to certain minutes uh, with just single engine functioning. So, ETOPS 120 means aircraft can fly up to 120 minutes with just one operative engine. Right? But we will limit our discussion related to the gate exam only. So first of all, let's see what happens when engine fails. So initially, both the engines are working, right? So there is a symmetry of thrust, correct? Now let's say right engine got failed, right? In this case, now aircraft doesn't have sufficient power now. So its velocity will decrease, correct? Now due to the asymmetry of thrust, because of the thrust from the left engine, there will be yawing moment on the aircraft like this. Correct? Now we know that this yawing moment and rolling moment both are coupled. So because of this yawing moment, there will be rolling moment also. Right? Now to counter this yawing moment, pilot needs to apply rudder deflection like this. There will be side force on the vertical tail, which will create anti-clockwise moment like this to counter the yawing moment produced by the engine. Correct? Anti-clockwise when seen through the Z axis. This will also increase the trim drag of the aircraft, right? Next thing is, there will be additional drag because of the windmilling effect, right? Which can be reduced with the help of variable pitch propeller. So this additional drag will again create yawing moment in this direction, correct? So first of all, let's discuss this problem from aircraft stability aspects. And let me put it here. So first of all, we will discuss this from aircraft stability aspects, like how much radar deflection is required to counter the moment, right? For this, we will take one example from gate exam. An aircraft with twin jet engines has following specifications. Thrust produced per engine 8000 Newton, span wise distance between two engines 10 meter. Wing span is also 10 meter, so they are at the Wing area 50 meter square, rudder effectiveness is minus 0.002 per degree, density of air at sea level is equal to 1.225 kilogram per meter cube, rudder deflection in degree required to maintain zero side slip at 100 meter per second in study level flight at sea level with non-functional right engine, right, is, so right engine is not working. So because of left engine thrust like this, there will be yawing moment on the aircraft, right? Clockwise when seen through Z axis, correct? And this engine is not working. So we need to apply the rudder such that there will be side force and there will be anti-clockwise moment when seen through Z axis to maintain zero side slip, correct? So first of all, let's find out the moment due to this thrust. So moment due to thrust will be equal to thrust into this distance from CG to the line of action of thrust, correct? So this will be 5 meter. Thrust is 8000 8, Newton 
into 5 that is 40,000 Newton meter. Right? This moment should be countered by the moment produced by rudder deflection. Correct? We need to find out by how much degree we have to deflect the rudder del r. Right? What is this rate of change of yawing moment coefficient with respect to the rudder deflection del r? That is do C n by do del r. It is equal to minus 0 0.002 per degree. So, how much C n is getting produced per degree deflection of rudder? Correct? So, what will be yawing moment coefficient C n then? C n will be rate of change of yawing moment coefficient with respect to the rudder deflection into how much rudder we have deflected del r right if we multiply this cn with half rho v square sb that will become yawing moment in newton meter right so yawing moment n is equal to half rho v square sb into Cn, correct? Into Cn. In place of Cn, we are going to write this do Cn by do del r into del r. Right? Now, to maintain the zero side slip and to trim the aircraft in such situation, summation of all the moments should be zero. Means, moment produced by thrust plus n is equal to 0 right so that is 40000 newton meter plus half rho v square s b do cn by do del r into del r is equal to 0 let's substitute the values 40,000 plus half into 1.225 into 100 square surface area 50 B is 10 into minus 0 0.002 into del R. This we have to find out is equal to 0. So from here we will get rudder deflection angle that is equal to 6.53 degree right so this much rudder deflection is required to maintain the zero side slip correct now let's discuss this problem from the aspect of aircraft performance right so the question is what will be its next equilibrium speed after failure of one engine right this question we have given in test series so I am not going to solve it here. First you can try, but I will give you a hint. So initially, when both the engine were working, it was flying at constant speed. Thrust was equal to drag, right? Let's say right engine got failed. Now thrust is no longer equal to drag, correct? Its velocity will decrease. Its velocity will decrease till the point when there will be again equilibrium between the thrust produced by this left engine and the drag right thrust of this left engine will be equal to the drag at that particular speed that will be its next equilibrium speed correct so this is how we you can find out the next equilibrium speed after the failure of one engine but here we have to take certain assumptions also that it is flying at low altitude such that variation of density is negligible and the tr trim drag due to the application of rudder is negligible wind milling drag is negligible such that cd remains constant right so by balancing the thrust available from left engine and drag at particular speed we can find out what will be the its next equilibrium speed right 